Hello and welcome my friends. I am Dr. Shabtoshi Banerjee welcoming you to one of my very interesting sessions. I am going to share with you look and diagnose here. You know in previous different sessions I have shared with you how you can hear the cry sounds, hear the cough sounds, hear the stammering and prescribe. See the skin, look and diagnose the skin and prescribe. And I am going to share with you a very interesting aspect here today is how you can look at the gates and diagnose the remedy. Look at how the patient is walking and come up with a prescription. You have been taught in the medical, in, in practice of medicine how you can look at the gait and diagnose the disease but you can diagnose the remedy as well homeopathically with look at the gates. So the posture of the patient while walking, I have been trained, I have been inherited with by my father, by my granddad that how you can look at the appearance of the patient, gesture, posture, behavior and you can come up with the remedy. So here I'm going to share with you how you can look at the appearance of the gait, how the patient is walking and come up with a prescription. Without any further delay, our first gait of the day, which is a very interesting one. I'm going to share with you, my friends, the gait. This is the gait of Lathyrus sativus. So Lathyrus is a remedy which is a predominantly a nerve remedy. And you will find there are two aspects of Lathyrus walking. This is the first aspect where they walk on the toes. They are walking on the toes. Walk on the toes. That's one of the aspects of Lathyrus. And also you will find with Lathyrus in many times that they knock their knees when walking. So they put the knees together. They knock the knees when walking. And as well as they lift their heels and they walk on their toes. You'll find this very common with patients with cerebral palsy, children with neuromuscular deficits, where one of the important factors I'm sharing with you again, the knocking of the knees, the knees come in contact with each other when walking, and the toes are on the ground, but the heels do not touch the ground, and they walk like this. So one of the very important aspects of lathyrus is there is a lot of rigidity, a lot of rigidity of the muscles. So you'll find muscles of the calves are very tense, so there's a lot of spasticity. We call this gait as a spastic gait. As well as it's also like an equine gait where they walk on their uh, toes and the heels do not touch the ground. That's important for lathyrus. Children with cerebral palsy, you can find that as well with lathyrus sativus. So walk on their toes and also the knees knock against each other in a patient where there's a lot of rigidity of the calf muscles lot of spasticity the muscles are very very tense and that's very important for lathyrus you can find this in cases cases of muscular dystrophy as well where the muscles are very tense very rigid and that's important for lathyrus sativus as well my second gate of the day my friends is another very interesting remedy is manganum acidicum Manganum acidicum is a remedy again for neurological conditions for Parkinson's. You have to understand there are two aspects of manganum acidicum's gait here. One, when they are walking, there is a tendency to fall forward. So they walk like this. Tendency to fall forward, like they are trying to catch up with the center of gravity. So there is a tendency to fall forward. Also in case of manganum acidicum, they walk on their toes and the heels do not touch the ground. So if you combine both the features, walk on their toes, at the same time they are bending forward, bending forward, bending forward. That's important for manganum acidicum. So if you look at the upper part of me, you'll see that they are trying to catch up with the center of gravity. They are bending forward, tendency to fall forward. They are trying to catch up with the center of gravity. You'll find that in Parkinson's as well, which is a very important factor for manganum acidicum. And as I shared with you, they also walk on their toes. So when you combine both the features, walking on their toes as well as bending forward, that's important for manganum acidicum. Now you have to understand what is the difference between lathyrus here. Lathyrus also walks on their toes, manganum also walks on their toes. If you open Borica's Metromedica for manganum acidicum, you will find in manganum there is a lot of soreness of the muscles. I'll read this line from Borica's Metromedica for manganum acidicum. 
every part of the body feels sore when touched so when you touch their body part sore sore every part of the body feels sore on when touched so there's a lot of soreness in manganum aceticum whereas the thyrus as i shared with you is more rigidity is more tense is more rigid that's important for lathyrus whereas in manganum the soreness is an important part so in cases of parkinsons and very interestingly if you look in the introduction of boric case of manganum aceticum it will be it is said that people make fun of each other's gait because there is always this is called as a slapping gait where they are walking on the toes as well as they are trying they are bending forward trying to catch up with the center of gravity in manganum aceticum if they try to walk backward they will fall so that's important for manganum aceticum where you will find it's what we call as a slapping gait so that's important for your manganum aceticum that's my second gait of the remember there remember the comparative metromedica they similar to lathyrus but in case of lathyrus you will find the rigidity in manganum there is a soreness you touch it you press any of the body parts it's so to touch in manganum aceticum my third gait of the day which is also a very interesting gait my friends do remember is the sluggish and slow gait sluggish and slow gait you'll find this in patients with neurological weakness neurasthenia forget about the name of the disease concentrate on the remedy differentiation so very sluggish and slow gait you know as is they're taking baby steps can't walk for i can't walk fast if i'm going for a walk i'm walking like this baby steps so very sluggish very slow gait top remedies for this my friends is gelsamium and phosphoric acid two great neurological remedies where you'll find the sluggish and slow gait so they walk very very slowly obviously you'll combine that in gelsamium with the four d's dull dizzy drowsy debility and remember an h and a t for gelsamium heaviness and tremors muscles feel heavy that's why i'm slow i cannot because my muscles are heavy i cannot walk fast so slow gait sluggish gait you'll find this in gelsamium and you'll find that in phosphoric acid why phosphoric acid as i mentioned because in phosphoric acid there's the weakness there's a exhaustion weakness is reflected in the mental plane in the physical plane in the neurological plane as well where you find the slow sluggish gait people even in the 40s and 50s is this premature senility they're walking very slowly gelsamium is walking slowly because of the heaviness of the limbs the limbs are very very heavy whereas in phosphoric acid they're walking slowly because of the exhaustion exhaustion which engulfs their vitality the emotional plane the physical plane in phosphoric acid and remember phosphoric acid is a remedy for diabetes mellitus so in many cases of diabetic neuropathy you can find this slow sluggish gait because of the exhaustion of the patient which is reflected in the endocrinal plane as well of phosphoric acid so that's about the slow and sluggish gait the number next gait of the patient which you must again remember which is also a very interesting gait my friends is the gait of heloderma another very interesting neurological medicine is heloderma now heloderma when he or she walks and this is very interesting you can prescribe the remedy based on the gait itself they lift up their feet and bring down the heel hard so they lift up their feet higher than usual so they lift up their feet and bring us down the heel hard and that's the typical gait of heloderma where it's like a stamping gait the lifting their feet and bringing down the heel hard heel part is bringing them the, uh, bringing them the hard down very very hard and that's very very classical my friends for heloderma heloderma is a very important neurological medicine it's prepared from the the gila lizard and in case of heloderma my friends do always remember with these paretic features with these neurological features one of the very common factors is coldness no other remedy in the entire metromedica will tell you this that it's like an arctic coldness if you see in borike you'll find this line arctic coldness is like the coldness which you'll find in the snow cap mountains that kind of coldness arctic coldness you find with Hel heloderma so you touch their hands you touch their feet you touch everywhere you find coldness and you if you look in borike if you look in clark you will see it's mentioned coldness is mentioned everywhere for heloderma which is a very important factor for this wonderful remedy another interesting factor about heloderma 
is when they walk, as I mentioned, they bring down the heel hard, right? And also there's a sensation, oh, I'm walking on sponge. I don't want to feel my feet, I'm walking on sponge. So, you know, they will sometimes see to s if it's a soft surface or a hard surface because it's a feeling as if I'm walking on sponge. You can find the symptom very many times with many neurological patients. And remember, Helodharma can be a wonderful medicine for this condition. So can cases of paralysis, cases of neurological weakness, cases of diabetic neuropathy, where there's a feeling of sponge or there's a feeling as if they're actually they're bringing down the heel very, very hard with, remember the word arctic coldness, coldness all over the limbs. I have had heard many stories of Helodharma where patients of paralysis were relieved, were retrieved with Helodharma based on the symptom of that arctic coldness. So that's a very important factor for your Helodharma. All of these remedies, my friends, are neurological mostly. So remember the higher potencies works best, 200C, 1M in the centesimal scale will give you ample, ample um, relief with these gates. The next one, my friends, is another interesting gate, which you'll find is what we call as a shuffling gate. Or it's also known as a dragging gate. Now, when you come across remedies like of shuffling gait or dragging gait, if you look at me, please, you'll find that in cases of shuffling gait, the patient doesn't lift up their feet. So they're unable to lift up their feet. So the, as a consequence of not lifting up their feet, they drag their feet on the ground. So they're walking and the normal lifting of the feet is not there. So it's as if they're dragging their feet and you'll find this is what we know as a shuffling gait and the consequence of the shuffling is the patient is ultimately dragging their feet. The top remedies my friends for this is mygale. Mygale is a wonderful spider which works in such cases. Mygale, Nagswamika, Tabecum. Mygale, Nagswamika, Tabecum, Zincum are remedies which can work wonderfully in such cases. Now, if you understand for mygale, mygale is a wonderful neurological remedy. So with this dragging gait in mygale, you find a lot of twitches, ticks in mygale. And there's uncontrollable movement, uncontrollable movement. You'll find cases of Huntington's chorea, where there's uncontrollable movement. A patient is always moving about, very restless. But it's an un involuntary restlessness. And they're unable to lift their feet. So dragging gait with the involuntary movements you'll find with mygale. So a lot of twitching, trembling with involuntary movements is very important for your mygale. One of your top remedies for this is mygale for shuffling or dragging gait. Obviously, Naxomica, Tabecum, Zincum are other remedies which can come in handy in such cases. So that's also quite important for your shuffling or dragging gait. Obviously, when you come across zincum, zincum can have the shuffling gait. But remember, zincum's restlessness is more in the legs. So the legs are constantly restless in zincum. Mygale's movement, uncontrollable movement is of the entire body. So they're always, you know, moving involuntarily. But with zincum, you'll find it's more restless legs. And with the hyperactivity of zincum in the legs, you'll find the brain is underdeveloped. So intellectual capacity. Memory cap capabilities are low in case of zincum group, zincum metallicum. Whereas mygale, the intelligence may be unaltered, unaffected. It's just the involuntary movements of the entire body with a lot of twitching and ticks and the dragging and shuffling gait with mygale. 200C1M works wonderfully for such cases with mygale as well. Now the next interesting gait, my friends, is the drunken gait or a gait like that of a drunken man. So whenever they are walking, so it's always like you know, they are going to fall, it's as if they are intoxicated. So a drunken man like gait, and a patient will tell you, oh, doctor, I feel I'm drunk and I'm intoxicated. So that kind of a drunken gait you will find in two top remedies, my friends do remember, is calibrometer. And you have that with physostigma. 
Calibrometum and physostigma are two top remedies for drunken like gait. Now, how do you understand the comparative metromedica? And that's very important. In calibrometum, you can have the drunken gait. But remember with calibrome, this is always affected. The brain is always affected. So they will have amnesic aphasia. Forgetful. They cannot remember what to say. So the wife has to tell, tell my, my, name, name, is, is, shaptoshi, shaptoshi. So they have to be told the word before they can speak it. The wife has to prompt them and then only they are able to speak it. And that's what we call for calibrometum as amnesic aphasia. Can remember the word told but they cannot speak it. So they have to be prompted and then only they can speak it. In those patients where the brain is affected, where the memory, the intellectual functions is affected and with the drunken man like Gaita, ah, remember calibrome can be a wonderful remedy. I've heard patients myself telling me patients with neurological weakness, brainstem hematoma, that you know, doctor, I'm walking like intoxicated. People think on the road that I'm intoxicated, whereas I'm actually not. And that you'll find, my friends, with calibrometer. Second remedy in this list is physostigma. Physostigma is also another wonderful remedy for neurological conditions. Very underrated, very underused. But remember, for physostigma, with neurological conditions, the eyes are affected. Blurring of vision, double vision. Gradually increasing myopia, gradual blindness coming in. So physostigma can help you with neurological conditions, with drunken gait, with patients with visual impairments. And that's very important for physostigma as well. So remember, drunken man like gait, calibrome, physostigma are your top two remedies.